Welcome. We're doing a 2 6 practice and problem solving on Envision. My name is Jason Jacobs. I'm going to help you with your math and Envision this year. Uh, this is coordinate grid geometry, and uh, I really like this because it combines two di disciplines of math working with the coordinate grid, and then we have uh, finding distance with absolute value. And then we're mixing in like perimeter and, and, and area. So I would say that this is a very valuable. A problem. I, you know, I only pick three problems for us to do. I'm going to show you some strategies and ways because I've seen this this type of thing take uh, students hours and hours to do. But if you follow my uh, directions, I, I I think we'll expedite it, and you'll you'll have mathematical knowledge that you didn't already have, perhaps, and uh, some easy strategies to uh, quickly get this and uh, really develop a love for coordinate grid geometry. Let's get started. Find the perimeter of rectangle J, K, L, M. You can see the, the coordinates there of my J, K, L, M. I know yours might be different. Here we go. Write and solve an absolute value equation that will find the distance. Now, one thing you can't see, probably uh, like down here, there are a lot of parts to this. And uh, stick with me. You, you might have found me on the internet just being like, how the heck do you do this? Because uh, this this takes a while to do. I'm going to give you – your time is very valuable, and I'm going to get right into it, give you a lot of tips so that this doesn't take you too long. And stick with me for other assignments too. Uh, you know, there is a coordinate grid graph right here, guys. Under math tools, you'll have to switch windows a lot. And I'm not going to do it for you now because I have, a, I think, a better way. But you might like this um, coordinate grid grapher. And you can plot the points here and really get a nice visual for it. How about your math notebook for me, guys? Um, because I'm going to show you how to sketch. I like to sketch. We, you know, we don't always have the coordinate grid right in, out in front of us. And we can't really make all the little tick marks to do it but uh, let me show you how to sketch a coordinate grid real quick okay there's the x-axis there's the y-axis and there's a quadrant one there's quadrant two quadrant three and that's quadrant four and let's go ahead and sketch i'm not even going to bother with all the like little in all the little intervals you know what i mean but watch how I do this. I go negative four, and I'm just moving my pin over to negative four, and I'm going to go up one. I don't know if this is exactly where it is. I'm just sketching it to get a visual to help myself understand when you're finding distance. If, if the distance is in the same quadrant, you're going to subtract the absolute values of the coordinates that are different. If it's, uh, If you're finding the distance and it's crossing quadrants, you're going to add the absolute values. This is just giving me a visual, and it's very important you uh, you plot what we did here. So this is J, negative 4, 1. I'm going to plot K. K is negative 4, negative 1, okay? So this is just giving me a visual. That's all. Okay? I can clearly see from J to K I'm crossing quadrants. See how it's helping? Now, L is 2, negative 1. So over 2, maybe there, down negative 1. It just has to be in the right quadrant, really. And then the, um, the part that I think is important is actually physically writing this down. And guys, if you're, if you're 11 or 12 years old, I know this is a little bit of extra work. But this extra work will really help you get it the first time because you don't want to have to keep redoing. I've seen students just keep redoing these questions because they're just trying to take some shortcuts. Actually, I'm teaching you a shortcut because <laughs> I'm teaching you how to sketch it. But uh, it's a smart shortcut. We're still, we're still doing the work. We're just not drawing out a, a coordinate grid. So, and again, if you want to use the coordinate grapher, you just have to be switching windows that I taught you in 2-5. You'll just be switching windows. So now we have it. So JK, JK, and I'll switch colors for you. Do you see the negative 4? 
the x-coordinate's the same. The y-coordinate, though, switches quadrants, so we're going to add those absolute values. Let me show you. So we have the absolute value of 1 plus the absolute value of negative 1, which would be 2. We're going to do this for all of them. I think there's a lot of parts. KL. Here's KL. I want you to notice, see that negative 1 and that negative 1? Those are the same. We're crossing quadrants. I know that because that's negative and that's positive. So we're going to take the absolute values. Absolute value of negative 4 plus the absolute value of 2. Four plus two. Six. For me. What is it for you? Should be following the same pattern. Okay. This is the annoying part. I'm going to get rid of this now. So this has served its purpose in our math notebook. <sighs> I can't tell you how many students... I think it's kind of a misleading question, but uh, write an equation. So we have to write an actual equation that finds the perimeter of this rectangle. So the perimeter equals, an equation will have an equal sign, but they already wrote the equal sign here. So JK, if you recall for me, was 2. So you're going to write 2, and then you're going to have to write plus 6 plus, and that annoying, 2 plus and 6. So I've seen students, I mean, they immediately go right for 16, and I get it, right? I get why they would do that. See, 8 and 8 is 16. So I even had to look up, like, what am I supposed to do? Uh, so hopefully I helped you there. All right, the same thing, guys. So how do you do it without the um, drawing it out. Maybe you get the concept and you want it a little more advanced way, like the way I would do it. And I've been in sixth grade for 13 years. One of these days I'll graduate, but not today. Today my job's to help you, and I'm honored and privileged to do that, to be able to do that. So um, I'm going WX. See that WX? And you see how the negative one is the same? So look at the two. You see the uh, you think that's the same, but it's not. So that is a um, positive 2 here and a negative 2 here. This indicates that it's crossing quadrants. So when you're crossing quadrants, you're going to add those absolute values. So I am showing you a way to do it without the coordinate grid. And you can visualize it in your head. I do recommend if you're struggling with this to just take the time and draw out the coordinate grid. I just want to try to teach you as many different ways. I don't want you to say like, oh, I got to do it Mr. Jacobs way. You can do it your way. And again, did I show you guys the coordinate grapher up here? I think I did. All right, well, they're telling us to subtract here. So X, Y. There's X, there's Y. What's the same? See how the two is the same? See how that's negative and this one's negative? This indicates that we're in the uh, same quadrant. So in this case, the third quadrant. So we're going to subtract those absolute values. Four minus one. Three. Come on. Oh, they're making us do that thing again. See that? The four. Come on. Four plus three plus four plus three.
A lot of clicking, right? Am I done? Did I do it? Did the... Maybe it... I don't know. All right, let's see. Carlos use, used a coordinate plane to design the deck shown. Each unit on the grid represents one meter. To buy materials to build the patio, he needs to know the perimeter. That's like fencing going around it. What is the perimeter of the deck? Let's take a look at this deck. See the deck? The area is the inside squares. We're going to go around it. And they don't really have a scale on here, so I'll teach you a quick way to do it. You could do all the different um, distances, but can you see here that that one's two? One, two, going across. I like going like this. One, two, three, four, five. That's a distance of five. We're all within the same quadrant. So in this case, see the ones are the same? Nine minus four is five. So this is five here. And then can you see that that's three? Four minus one is three. Can you see from here to here is three? And from here to here is two. I'll have to draw an arrow. All right, now the hard part is like keeping track of all that. So let me use, let me change my color here to do it. I would be writing it down in your notebook, whatever yours is. So we have two plus two is four, plus three is seven, plus three is 10. I love when I hit 10. Plus five is 15, plus five is 20. And I was just kind of marking them off just to keep track. It's a lot to keep track of. It's easy to make a mistake in, in those sorts of instances. All right, guys. Hey, it looks like we got it. And I hope this helps you with your assignment. My name is Jason Jacobs. This was 2-6 practicing problem solving for Envision Math, sixth grade math. Have a great day. Bye. And that's a wrap.